Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In the previous video, I showed you how to take a mirror multiplayer game and set it up on Azure to have dedicated server hosting. And I know plenty of people want me to also cover matchmaking, parties, chat, user authentication, leaderboard statistics, all that fun stuff that Azure PlayFab supports. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up and install the SDK and start using some of these features today. I hope you're looking forward to it, so let's get started. But just before we jump into it, I'd like to mention that only 20% of the people who are watching are actually subscribed to the channel. So if you want a quick and easy way to help support us for free, just head down below, hit the subscribe button and enjoy the video. So the setup for this video is to create an account if you don't already have one with Azure PlayFab. If you do, then go ahead and sign in. And then once you're signed in, you'll be met with a screen like this where you'll see a game by default. And if you want to, you can make a new one for this. It's really up to you. But I have a game here, it's, it's empty, it's just got a name PlayFab Tutorials, and I'm going to open that up. As well as this, you're going to need a Unity project, so I've just got myself a brand new empty project, just using the template that we get with the Universal Render Pipeline. So to get the PlayFab SDK, we'll head back to the browser, and I'll be giving you a link down below to this page, which is the quick start for PlayFab. And if we scroll down here, there is a button to download the Unity Editor extension for PlayFab. So we click that, and then as long as you have your Unity project open, when you click the download, it will open it up in here and say, here are all the files we're going to be installing. Let's go ahead and hit import. So once it's done, you'll see a PlayFab editor extension window over here. And if you go up to window and PlayFab, you can find it here in case it didn't show up, editor extensions. And it'll ask you to create an account, or if you already have one, which you should by now, then you hit login and I'll leave you to enter your email and password now. Then once you're logged in, it will tell you that no SDK is installed because the thing we installed is just this editor extension. So I'm going to hit install PlayFab SDK. Now that it's installed the SDK, you can go down to set my title and change the studio to be whatever studio you have. Mine's called Dapper Dino. And because I only have one title, it's immediately set it to be that title. So now that the SDK is fully installed, we can actually write some code to do some API calls to PlayFab to do various different things like logging in. And we are going to look at more sophisticated ways of logging in, but for this video, we'll do a really simple method. So what we can do is we can go to our scripts folder, right click and create a new c -sharp script, and I'll call this PlayFab login. And I'll be adding that to a game object. So right click, create a new game object, call it play fab login go to the inspector and drop it on there and then we want to open it up in visual studio code so inside the script we'll add some usings we'll add using playfab and then we'll add using playfab.client models we'll get rid of the system collections namespaces and then inside of our script i'll get rid of the boilerplate so we're ready to go so all I want to try doing is when we hit start, I want it to try and log us in. And for now, we won't be having emails and passwords and usernames. We'll just simply be having an ID for our user just to keep it really simple. So in the start method, private void start, we have to make a request. So var request equals new, and we want a login with, and you see all these various other ways to log in, but we're going to use login with custom ID request. And then inside of here, there are different properties we can set. We want to set the custom ID equal to just an ID for this player. As it says here, a custom unique identifier for the user. So we can just call this the getting started guide. And then another thing we can set is a bool for create account, which simply says, if, this, if there's no what user with this ID, then do we want to create a new account for them? We'll set that to true for now. So trying to log in with this ID the first time, the player doesn't exist, so it will be created. And every other time, it'll just log in with that user. So now we've created our model, which is just simply the data object we're going to be sending over the API. So the next line is to actually do the API request. So we can do that by typing PlayFab Client API. And we have all those login methods. We can log in with our custom ID where the first parameter is the request object we just created. So pass in the request. The second is a callback with the result. And then the third is a callback with an error. So we can make two methods here. So we'll make a method called private void on login success. 
and this takes in a login result. We'll call that result. And then a second method down here, private void on login failure. And this takes in a playfab error. And if we pass these methods in as callbacks, it means that um, when the login is successful, this gets called. When the login fails, this gets called. So up here we can say on login success, comma on login failure. Add a semicolon on the end. And for now it's up to you what you want to do in these two cases. I'm just going to log to the console. So debug.log, we can say here login success. And then down at the bottom we can do a debug.log error and we can log out the error. And this error object has a handy method for us called generate error report which converts the error, as it says here, into a human readable string. We can just log out to the console. So that's it for the code. We just want a simple example of logging in and creating a new user. So if we head back into Unity, uh, if we hit play now, it will create our new user on Playfab. So to show that this actually works, we'll head over to Playfab, click on players on the left, and you'll see we have zero players, zero total players. We'll now hit play, look in the console, and we should get a login success, which we do. I'm going to stop playing, head back over to my browser, and if I now refresh, look at this zero here, it will then become a one. And sometimes this is a bit slow to update, so you can just mess around with the query here, highest value today, and there we go. Here's our player. It was one minute ago. If I click on here, it'll tell us about the player, and you can do plenty more things with the player's account. So you can uh, track bands, logins, friends, all these other things, purchases, multiplayer, characters inventory, so many things you can do on Playfab. We only just scratched the surface. Um, where I put the string getting started guide is one of their identities down here. You see getting started guide of type custom because in our code we logged in with a custom ID. You could also have their identity with let's say uh, login with email, Facebook, Game Center, iOS, Nintendo, whatever, right? There's so many different ways you can log them in. So yeah, that's it for this video. We now have the SDK set up and we have a really simple example of logging in a player. So after this video goes live, I'll be putting up a poll and I'll have some options for different things you want me to cover, like matchmaking, leaderboards, proper user authentication with email and password, all those kind of things. And just let me know what you guys want to see. I'll try and cover all of them over the coming weeks, but I'll try and judge which order to cover them in. Some will be a lot more complicated than others to implement. So just keep that in mind. Some might take a bit longer to produce. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Let me know down below what you want to see next. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. A special thanks to Francisco Lira, Liz Kimber, Andrew Williams, Beard or Die, Benjamin Hilda, Chris Diplock, Colin Lester, David McDermott, Farouk, Jake Nixon, Yoris Letter, Katinka Mom, Matt Fryer, Mike Troop, Sam Marcus, Malvin, and Rack. If anyone else would like to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help us out by following on any of those or checking any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.